Hi everyone, we're talking about signs and symptoms of a small bowel obstruction in this lesson. So we're going to talk about what a small bowel obstruction is and why signs and symptoms occur. But first, what is a small bowel obstruction? So we're going to first look at what the small bowel is. When we say small bowel, we're referring to the small intestines. So when you swallow food, this is your esophagus, here's your stomach, and your stomach leads into the small intestines, which wind around within your abdomen, eventually leading to the large intestine. So a small bowel obstruction is a mechanical blockage of the small intestine, preventing or reducing the passage of contents. Now there are certain risk factors and causes for a small bowel obstruction. Prior abdominal surgeries is one big risk factor. A history of small bowel obstructions is another risk factor. So like many things in medicine, if you've had something in the past, you're more likely to get it in the future. A history of malignancy is also a risk factor. And having inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease is also a risk factor as well. Now we're talking about signs and symptoms in this lesson. And before we get into signs and symptoms, when a small bowel obstruction occurs, signs and symptoms occur shortly after the onset of a partial or complete obstruction. So we're not going to get into the details as to partial or complete or other types of small bowel obstruction. If you want more information, please check out my full in-depth lesson on this topic. But this lesson is all on the signs and symptoms of a small bowel obstruction. So let's start with one of the main symptoms of a small bowel obstruction, and that is abdominal pain. So this abdominal pain is considered to be intermittent and it is crampy in nature. So it feels crampy. The pain may become severe in the case of bowel strangulation or perforation. So in this case, the pain can intensify rather quickly and become severe if the bowel becomes strangulated or perforated. And the pain often occurs in the epigastric area. So the epigastric area is in this area here. So it's in the middle of your abdomen, above your belly button, or above the umbilicus. And then there can also be umbilical pain. So umbilical pain is around the belly button. So those are the two common areas where we see pain in a small bowel obstruction. Some other signs and symptoms of a small bowel obstruction include nausea and vomiting. So along with abdominal pain, we can see nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting are more likely to occur due to proximal bowel distension. So what I mean by proximal is when we refer to the anatomy diagram in the last slide, the part of the small intestine closest to the stomach. So the small intestine that is affected in this general area here. So particularly the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. If that's affected, we can see issues with nausea and vomiting, although it can occur with other parts of the small intestine being affected, but it's more likely to occur if proximal parts of the small intestine are affected. And the reason here is because intestinal transit slows due to occlusion. And it's relatively common. It occurs in 60 to 70 percent of patients. Some other important symptoms of a small bowel obstruction include constipation. And constipation in this context means reduced frequency of bowel movements. So less bowel movements than usual. And you can imagine that if you have a partial or complete blockage of your gastrointestinal tract, things are not going to move the way they should. And you're going to have reduced bowel movements. You may still pass gas and stool in partial small bowel obstruction. So if the small bowel is not completely obstructed, Things can still get around the obstruction. Things like gas and stool can also get through, but it will be in a reduced amount. And constipation is very common. It occurs in 80 to 90% of patients. And the more severe type of constipation is called obstipation. So obstipation can occur. This is complete constipation. This is where there's cessation of passing gas or flatus and cessation of bowel movements. So no bowel movements and no passing of gas at all. This is due to complete occlusion. So in the context of having abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and if you see obstipation where there is a cessation of passing gas and a cessation of bowel movements, this is where we start to really think this is a small bowel obstruction. What's important to note here is that in the case of both constipation and obstipation, there may be an initial increase in bowel movement frequency. So as the small bowel obstruction occurs or 
starts, there can be an increased bowel movements temporarily, and then bowel movements will slow and may stop completely, and there may be a cessation of passing gas as well. Some other signs and symptoms include abdominal distension. So you can imagine that if there's an obstruction and you're not passing any gas, that gas is going to sit in your gastrointestinal tract. And this is more likely to occur if the obstruction occurs in the distal ilium. So the distal ilium is the last part of your small intestine where the small intestine meets the large intestine. So all that gas can be trapped within the gastrointestinal system and it can essentially cause bloating of the abdomen as that gas continues to build up within the gastrointestinal tract. And there can also be bowel sound changes. These often occur with a certain pattern. There can be increased bowel sounds initially, which we refer to as borborygmus or borborygmi. And then there's a decrease in bowel sounds as the occlusion completes or as the occlusion worsens. So again, when a bowel occlusion or bowel obstruction of the small intestine occurs, there can initially be increased bowel sounds, so more gurgling sounds from your abdomen, but then eventually those bowel sounds slowly decrease, and then you may not hear them at all. So that can occur with a small bowel obstruction as well. There are some other signs and symptoms that are important to note with a small bowel obstruction. These include diarrhea. So we mentioned constipation and obstipation being very, very common symptoms in a small bowel obstruction. So diarrhea is often a more uncommon symptom. This can occur or may occur in the setting of a partial small bowel obstruction. So we can see some diarrhea occurring if there is a partial small bowel obstruction, but you won't see this with a complete small bowel obstruction. But more often than not, it's going to be issues with constipation and obstipation in a small bowel obstruction. But I just wanted to mention that diarrhea is possible in certain instances. And then we can also see a fever occurring in some individuals. This is more when there is bowel strangulation. So when the bowel twists in such a way that cuts the blood circulation off to that part of the bowel, we can see issues with that bowel beginning to die or if there has been so much distension of the bowel and the bowel perforates, and this can lead to an infection, and both of these can lead to an infection. So this can cause a fever in those cases where there's strangulated small intestine or there's perforation of the small intestine. So if you want to learn more about small bowel obstruction, including how it's diagnosed and treated, please check my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.